everyone. stream. Hey Tess. Hey Chris. Hey Space Kidder. <clears throat> so, who's ready for some more topology? Actually, could I have ev people who are watching um, say in the chat if they've seen topology before or not, like uh, actual definition of a topological space. Um, so I think some people have and some people haven't. Okay, so yeah. So especially people who haven't, I'd like to know um, because then uh, I don't want to go too slow if lots of people have seen it but if people haven't seen it I don't really want to skip stuff because it's suddenly just oh and by the way here's the things we actually care about and I'm not going to define them um, which is not great <coughs> um, yeah Tommy perfectly fine if people want to comment in um, in discord that's cool too because I uh, I'm watching the, the lecture chat discord at the same time because um, I know not everyone um, has a Twitch account. Um, <clears throat> Alright, anyway, so hopefully the, 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 the treatment here is, is maybe slightly novel um, to some extent. Like, what's the fastest road to sort of talking about topology in a sensible way? Um, Alright. So hopefully this is just a good uh, refresh for people who have seen it before or possibly a uh, slightly different treatment and if you haven't seen it before please please like mention something in the chat uh, discord or twitch um if i feel i'm going a bit too fast okay okay so end of last lecture we ended up by mentioning what a basis for a topology was. So we define what a topology was. Uh, let's quickly scroll back up here. It's a collection of subsets satisfying some closure properties. So we do some operations on these sets in our specified collection and get things back in the subset in that in that collection. Okay, so and then we said a basis for that topology is um, sorry if I'm sniffing. Um, <clears throat> a, a smaller collection uh, which sort of generates everything in the topology. Oh man. Yeah. <clears throat> Just now, I just popped a fisherman's friend in. And the, the menthol was suddenly just making all the, uh, yeah, it's loosening everything up. I won't tell you uh, too much more. Um, anyway, but that, that presumed I had a topology to start with and I wanted to generate it from something smaller. It's like, I've got a vector space and I want to give you a basis for it, which is enough to get everything in the vector space. Um, what about I go the other way around? What if I just say, how can I generate a topology that I don't have from smaller information? So I don't have all the open sets I don't have all the elements of the topology. I just want to specify something smaller, which is easier to talk about. So for a metric space, we found that the um, the open balls form a basis for the metric topology. But how do we define the metric topology anyway? It was in terms of the open balls. So let's abstract that. So what, what can we say about the collection of open balls? Uh, as just like an abstract collection of subsets of a metric space and those are the properties we want um, what we call a base to have so there's some variation in the terminology here like some people say basis some people say base um, i'm going to say basis if i have a topology and i've got a, a sub like a subset of the topology 
but I'm going to say base if I don't have a topology to start with. It's just personal preference. Um, a style thing is uh, nothing, um, nothing too crucial. So I have a collection B. So it's a collection of subsets of my set X. Make sure my coffee's not too close to the edge. It's the uh, the lecture fuel. <clears throat> the tea might be in a giant mug, uh, but the coffee's in a tiny, tiny cup. Um, yeah, sorry, Josh. It might be your end. My um, my signal seems fine. Um, okay, I have a collection of subsets. So this is called a base. if um, so it has to satisfy two conditions every point in X writing is terrible Um, so the elements of B cover X. So everything in, in, in the set big X is in some W. So we think of the, the subsets W as like covering X. So that's sensible. Um, <clears throat> and secondly, if I have a pair of things in the base, um, and for, everything in the intersection um, there's a thing in the base satisfying uh, X is in W3 and W3 is in the intersection and um, this is the sort of the basically the property we need, um, the properties we need of the open balls in a metric space. So, ignoring the metric topology for now, we just look at the open balls. I mean, you can even go so far as to say, let's just take the open balls. Um, with rational radius or open balls with radius one on n for n a natural number um, this is you know so a base is not unique um, you can have lots of them in a metric space um, so let's just draw a picture here's a here's a point say y this is just some random metric space so um, not necessarily R2 um, and if I have a point X in the intersection I mean this is the picture you draw so here's let's call this R Y R Z and this is assuming that the intersection of of the two balls uh, R Y this is open ball B centered at uh, Z with radius R Z and uh, yeah Charles we're gonna get to that's what that's like uh, literally two examples away um, <clears throat> uh, yeah and so this is this is a good um, good exercise it's basically let's uh, what do you do in a metric space use a triangle inequality so let's you know if I'm not going to do all of this, but I'll just do the setup. So if this if this inequality isn't satisfied, the intersection is empty, in which case it's vacu this that condition two is vacuously true. You know, because there are no x in the intersection, so we'd have nothing to check. Um, every point has an open ball around it of radius one. Um, so condition one is trivially true. Um, 
and we have a d x y less than r y d x z is less than r z I should say it's metric space m comma d so from this these three things find a positive r with um, the open ball of radius little r is in the intersection okay and it's literally just inequalities and and um, draw some triangles uh, you know we know this distance we know this distance we know this distance um, and we want to check um, we could literally write down um, yeah and pick a point in in smaller than little r we don't know what little r is what's the condition that it lies inside the intersection of these two things okay so here's a here's a uh, well I might give the example um, that Charles mentioned so let's call that example one example two um, given a topology tau on X is a base because in this case the intersection of two things in tau is again in tau and so we could take our w3 to literally be the intersection um, condition one is satisfied because like the subs the x as a subset of itself is in tau and so every x is inside that element all right <clears throat> so we'll get back to actual um topologies in a moment here's here's a uh a third example which um, people are less likely to have seen um, drop a comment if you've seen it before um, so there's a risky mm, I'm gonna say this maybe in a in a in a way that's not logically consistent but I don't think there's a good word for it no, let me. Let, I'll mention Zariski in a moment. Let's see. Ah, oh, sorry. A collection of sets of this form. Um, let's call them WP. Let's. I should say take the set uh, CN. So. Ah. Uh, uh, Luke, um, almost. That's almost true. It's almost true that, well, irreducible polynomials are not a subset. An irreducible polynomial is not a subset of CN. Um, so this is Z, vector Z in CN, such that P of Z is not equal to zero. So P polynomial in the entries of the vector z. Um, this is a base on Cn. Um, normally, people talk about this, um, <clears throat> like the actual, like the complements of these WPs, but just in the order that we've we've talked about it, it goes this way. Um, as far as so. I'm not demanding that P is irreducible, but if I assumed that um, P was irreducible, it would also be a base. Um, yeah, so the, the base is indexed by the polynomials. It's not the polynomials themselves. Um, <clears throat> okay. So I just give the example three because it's one that... Um, it's very far from your normal Euclidean style intuition about what a topology does. Um, let me think. Uh, uh, 
just trying to think. I mean, here's a here's a silly example. So I'm just just thinking of one off the top of my head. Take a set X. Um, uh, to consist just of X. Um, um, space Kidder, uh, no, that's, uh, that's conflating two things with the same name that are very, very different. You have to kind of do a lot of reductions and weird, um, analogies to get to where the, you can even think of these as the same thing. Um, so just to define the base just to consist of the single set, which is everything. So, um, this is a base because, uh, every point in X is in something in the base and given any two things in the base, you intersect them. And then, well, that turns out to be in the base again. And so we're kind of done. Um, this is kind of un less, much less familiar than like, for instance, the, take the Euclidean metric on Rn, for instance. <clears throat> okay, so given a base, we want to actually get a topology. So we, we went the other way, now we've got to go back. So so the topology generated by a base, let's call it tau sub b, base is b. Um, Uh, they should be given by unions of things that are in the base. Um, oh man, sorry, sorry. Is that weird? <clears throat> Cultural thing of Some cultures it's more polite to sniff than blow your nose, and some cultures it's the other way around. <clears throat> uh, this will be a weird blowing my nose on stream. Sorry, I gotta do this. I gotta mute the mute the thing. Oh, wow. That's better. Uh, yeah, it's nice, isn't it? We just had our shopping delivered, <coughs> like, you know, a minute before stream started, and that's where the milk was, so no time to... Uh, all right. Okay, right, so now we've, we can look at our um, our bases, our bases before. Um, and so all of these we can look at. So for instance, e.g. Um, there's a risky topology on Cn generated by the base above. Um, oh man, yeah. You get some weird. <coughs> yeah. Weird, weird uh, 
Twitch streams. So, um, so this has much fewer open sets than generated by the Euclidean topology. So we think of CN as like R to the two N, and it has its uh, metri Euclidean metric. Um, and this has much fewer open sets because um, uh, like every every open set is unbounded like the every open set extends out to infinity in in CN um, so you don't have like bounded open sets so the open sets are very big um, and also there aren't as many of them so that's it's always a good example to have up your sleeve just to um, when you're thinking about a general topological space to um, test your intuition that you're not relying on on something that you sort of think about Euclidean uh, topology um, so this union includes um, I should say includes I the empty indexing set uh, in which case um, the union over no things is equal to the empty set um, so you always get the empty set here um, so another example uh, we take this base on a set the topology All we have is the empty set and X. So this is a co-discrete uh, or sometimes indiscrete, sometimes chaotic or the other extreme is you say take the base to consist of all of the power set. Um, so contrast you can't get any more subsets this is called the the discrete topology um, and like the co-discrete topology is the smallest possible topology on a set and the discrete topology is the largest possible topology so they are like complete extremes <clears throat> um, but there's a risky topology is somehow it's one that people use a lot um, in algebraic geometry and so it's not just something pathological cooked up out of nothing it has a good good um, reason and it has some nice properties but not others it kind of sits in the middle um, so here's another example uh, okay so um, <clears throat> say given let's say given a pair of topological spaces so eventually we stop writing this topology but at this level we'll still write it um, generated by um, so what are the elements of the base they are just products of things that are open already um, like the Cartesian product so u is open in x and v is open in y <coughs> So if you're thinking about metric spaces, for instance, then um, like the L1 metric on a product of metric spaces, so where you say, um, is it L1 or is it max? 
maybe it's the max metric yeah I can't remember um, yeah I think it's the max metric where you take a pair of metric spaces take the Cartesian product of the underlying sets and then say what's my metric on that Cartesian product so you say well the distance between the pit two pairs of points is the maximum of the distance between each coordinate and that looks like this sort of u times v construction and then um yeah chris so these topologies do have universal properties but we've got to walk out work up to it um in the most um sensible way so um, it's possible here in this example we can uh, let's see use instead of the topologies bases instead um, how do you tickling we're uh, about three quarters of the way through a course here, so uh, sit back and enjoy the ride. Um, okay. All right, so let's see, how can we generate more, um, more bases and topologies? So not just on a single uh, set, but sets related by functions, because we like categories, right? So let's assume X, as a base um, and we have some subset Y so we can take the collection um, be restricted to Y which I define to be uh, just the intersection of all the base elements from X just intersect them with Y so then this uh, is a base on Y. Um, it will take Blin, the, well, it's not my area of speciality, but I gather it's pretty nice. Um, <coughs> Okay, but in so so that's cool, but in in particular, so if um, so if it was a topology to start with, uh, so for instance, the base that arises from a topology on X just by taking the base elements to just be the open uh, sets in the topology then your restriction of that base this is a topology on Y so that's something you can check um, cool but let's say more generally right so it doesn't have to be literally a subset it could be some injective function or more uh, you're welcome, Iltik Bin. Um, so more generally, let's suppose we just had a function to uh, uh, a set that has a has a topology. So more generally, let's say f some z to x. Uh, suppose we're given that, and say a topology on X you could think about this more generally in the case uh, where tau is just a base B instead but I'll just think about this case here um, then let's call F inverse of B this collection of sets so this generalizes the previous case um, so the the inverse image 
under an inclusion map is just the intersection. Um, so it's such that U is in tau. I wrote something stupid in my notes. Have to fix that. Um, U is in tau. Um, and this is a topology on Z. Um, yeah, because what you have to, it's just like sort of uh, that kind of algebra of set stuff where you say, well, I want something in the intersection of the two things that should be open. Um, but then I know I can pass back down to X and then it's open there and then I can take the inverse image up there and that's, you know, it's this type of backwards and forwards argument where you just keep applying the definition, the assumptions that tau consists of is a topology um, closed under the various operations and also how inverse images and images under F uh, interplay with intersections of things. Um, If anyone wants a refresher on that, I could throw together some very quick notes or dig some up. It's sort of the algebra of sets and how inverse images interact with um, intersections and unions and vice versa. Uh, drop me a line privately on the Discord and we can um, rustle something up. <clears throat> All right. But this, this sort of operation where you say, let's look at the inverse images of open sets is somehow special. Um, Tess, the pre-image topology, it's, um, it's also the initial topology for this map. Um, we'll get to that as a more general case, we should get to that, um, in a little bit. Okay. So then you might ask, what if Z already had a topology? So that's where we get to the definition of continuity. So let's let, uh, x tau of x uh, let's say y tau of y these are topological spaces um, and f from x to y so it's just a function of sets that's what I'm assuming. Um, so if the inverse image are, uh, yes, that's right, of U is in the topology on X, whenever U is in the topology for Y, F is continuous. And I just sort of parenthetically note, this is for tau x and tau y in that order. <clears throat> because x and y, the sets, could have different topologies, in which case we get a different notion of continuity. Um, so continuity is really about, um, you know, should you, your mental image should be something like, <clears throat> open sets are um, sort of big unions of things in a base and a base is a way of saying um, how close am I to a, to a point um, so yeah a base is like an open ball in a metric space and a small open ball tells you I'm close to that point so a base is more generally saying anything that's kind of in this element of the base I should think is close-ish, and I might say take smaller and smaller elements of the base as close-ish to that point. Um, and so we can actually, um, so yeah, so <clears throat> continuous functions, they, they take close things to close things, but here we're doing it in terms of open sets which are somehow a bit more nebulous. They could be sort of kind of big, kind of small, because they're arbitrary unions of things in the base. So it's like saying, what if I have a disjoint union of a bunch of open balls, not a disjoint, a union of a bunch of open balls. So it's a very irregular set, perhaps. 
um, and the inverse image of that under F is somehow like a union of open balls. Um, DMN uh, smaller is, is the same as in more intersections. No, I just mean like uh, yeah, possibly. So there's a version of this where you you sort of keep track of a like you think of a point and all the elements of the base that contain that single point. And so the ones that are contained in more things in the base are the smaller ones. Yeah, so that's a neighborhood base or, or something like that. So here we're just saying I have a base, but if I'm thinking close to a point, I just sort of think about the base elements that contain that point and the ones that are smaller and smaller in the sense of being inside more things than the smaller ones. Yeah, so metric space intuition is, is a bit, um, is okay, but you kind of got to realize that it's much abstracted. So like the Zariski topology, like being close to a point, like, well, the Zariski topology is not the same as the metric topology for any metric. And so being close to a point is maybe the wrong intuition because um, every open set is unbounded and every element in the base is unbounded. So you can be arbitrarily far away. So it's more like, um, it's more, shall we say, uh, smaller in the base is like being more constrained. And so in a sense of the Zariski topology, that's like saying, I'm off of all these hypersurfaces cut out by the polynomials. So I was like, I know I'm not on this hypersurface. I'm not on this hypersurface. I'm not on this, you know, I've got a big list of them and I'm not on any of them. That's a stronger constraint. And so that's somehow a smaller, um, a smaller element. Anyway, that's a philosophical digression. Um, but the point of talking about bases is that we can check continuity just with base elements. So here's the lemma. So continuity is defined in terms of open sets, in terms of everything in a topology on both uh, X and Y. But say, say tau X, tau Y arise from bases. So given some function, so a base on X and a base on Y, um, if the inverse image of W is in the base on X for all, um, all things in the base on Y, uh, for um, the bases generated by, sorry, the topologies generated by these bases. So this is um, fewer conditions to check. So in the metric space case, um, um, <clears throat> yeah, so this is even, this is maybe not quite the right condition that I want to say. Um, this is a, certainly a sufficient condition, um, but it's it's not very tight. Um, what I want to say is, yeah. So that's 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 kind of that's kind of a slack way of saying it. Here's a better way of saying it. Um, given the same data, so we want to say something like the epsilon delta definition for continuity in a metric space, which is only about open balls, um, same data, f, x, y, e, x, and b, y, if for all uh, x in the, so this is now, 
um, breaking apart the inverse image of W a little bit more. Uh, let's say there is. Um, I'm trying to think of some consistent lettering. Let's say T in T sub X in the base on X with X in T sub X, which is inside, strictly inside, well, inside the inverse image. And F is continuous, I should say my abbreviation for continuous is CTS. I will write this a lot. Okay. So now this is a bit more uh, relaxed. I'm not saying that I demand the inverse image of W is in the base on X, but at least it's um, from this condition we can say it's the union of things from the base on X. Okay. And now this is basically the 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 uh, exact analogy with the epsilon delta definition for metric spaces for continuity where you know for metric spaces it says something like the inverse image of an open ball every point in that inverse image has a little open ball around it contained entirely inside the inverse image um, when you unravel like what the epsilon delta definition says that's what it's saying um, and so just as epsilon delta is how you think about continuity for metric spaces uh, this is like an abstraction of that rather than the general definition and if your topologies arise from certain bases this is what you want to use because there's fewer conditions to check all right so we had a quick example of this and then sorry a little break um, so projection maps uh, ba, 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 ba. so we take the product topology on X times Y and we look at the two projections they are continuous Right, so like PR1 is continuous for the product topology and the given topology on X. <coughs> and same with PR2. And in fact, um, sorry, video's been a bit janky. Um, just dropped. Um, <coughs> like the product topology is designed to make this work. Because, for instance, what is like PR1 inverse of an open set in X? This is U times Y. And so every point in here uh, lies inside um, something in the base. Because things in the base look like U times V. And every point in Y lies inside some V. Let's call it X comma Y. Um, so you can see that the first condition would work in the, the lemma if Y itself was an element of the base on Y, um, which uh, is true if you take the base to be just the base on Y to be all open sets. But we could have taken the base to be like smaller um, and so, uh, like, this, 
y as a subset of itself may not have been in that basis. So that's why we need this slightly weaker criterion. All right, small break. I meant to do one a little while ago, but stretching break. And any comments, questions? Um, <coughs> and our space kidder, we are, we're not going about to hit pre sheaves. It's uh, going to be a good run up to the end in any case without uh, superfluous uh, material. Any observations? Alright, where did I want to go from here? Just in case you're curious, if I was a topology, which one would I be? Oh. That's a that's a good that's a good uh, Discord discussion right there. Anyway, the last time I taught this course, uh, it was a bit longer, thirty two lectures. And that was my type lecture notes. That's a good 120 pages of material. So um, you're lucky we're not trying to do that. There would be uh, socks would be blown off. I'm just trying to uh, think about um, blah 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 blah. All right, I think I'll we'll talk about final topologies. Ah. Oh. Yeah, this is this is the one that's uh... so we can extend the product topology to arbitrary products, um, but no, oh, no, we will, we will. Let's let's say more generally. So I just need to give you like a massive bank of examples of constructions of topologies. Um, but we need the infinite products. No, let's not do that. Um, <clears throat> so here's a, here's a definition, I want the final topology. So this is the thing that's probably um, where it starts to get interesting. Sorry. Um, so what are we given? We're given a collection of topological spaces. X alpha, say tau alpha, and so they're not all distinct, necessarily distinct. And functions, so alpha is in some indexing set. So really what matters here is the functions. So f uh, from x alpha to y so it's x alpha, so f alpha, where y is just a set. So I'm not asking that they're continuous. I'm just I've got functions. Then um, okay, and so we can define a topology on y. And we'll look at some examples of this and how they arise, um, the ones we care about. Uh, we define the final topology on uh, of u and y such that um, for all alpha in the indexing set. So the inverse image of my my subset of y, if it's open, if I look at the inverse image under every possible f alpha, if it's open, if those inverse images are all open, then u is open. That's precisely what the open sets are. <clears throat> I don't really have a symbol for this. Um, 
I mean, you have to check this is actually a gives a topology. Yeah, there's a, um, yeah. So as a as a corollary of this, as a sort of corollary of the definition, it's probably a special Latin word for this. Um, it's that f alpha is then continuous. All right, it's like before where <coughs> we had a map from z to x a topology on x and put a topology on z it was sort of the one that made f continuous here it's the other way around we've got topologies on these x alphas and a map to y and we're putting a topology on y that makes all the, the functions continuous sort of basically by construction and it's the it's the smallest such topology uh, well it the final topology uh, sorry it's the it's the largest topology so it has the most open sets so people talk about like topologies being large and small and then also fine and coarse so, um, so this is the same thing as the finest uh, let's see so large means there are many open sets which means it's uh, and they say it's it, the topology is fine because there are so many open sets. It's somehow there's a lot of um, it's very easy to like tell things apart because there's lots of open sets. So a coarse topology is small because there are not many open sets. So the open sets can't really tell things apart. So like there's a risky topology is coarser than the Euclidean topology. In another way, the Zariski topology is smaller. So, unfortunately, the the connotations, um, like the the sort of mental images, like smaller and finer, they're antonyms. They really mean different things. So, I like talking about large and small topologies because it really tells you something about the size of the collection of open sets. All right. Um, yeah, check it's a topology. It's uh it's slightly tricky. All right. So, what are some examples of this? So, for instance, so often y is constructed out of um the the sets underlying x alpha, like the the, the sets x alpha in some way. Um, so like why let's say y is the disjoint union of all the x alphas and I have uh, what I might call in beta from x alpha so this includes the beta that should be a beta make sure I don't confuse my dummy index um, it includes x beta into the um, oh dear man that's a good uh, analogy finely ground coffee is stronger yeah okay so that's a different axis like people talk about strong and weak topologies so a strong topology is fine which is also largest and coarse topology is weak which is smallest Ugh. anyway Take your uh, take your pick. I don't mind whichever one you use. Just maybe write out a table so you don't get them confused. Um, so here, here's my functions. These are my functions like f, beta, say. 
Um, so I set uh, U inside this disjoint union is open. So precisely when uh, you look at the inverse image of in beta, that's the same thing as uh, so in beta inverse of u is the same thing as u intersection x beta. is open. In particular, um, each each x alpha is open. Because its intersection with x alpha is x alpha, that's open inside x alpha. Uh, I should say is open in uh, the topology on x beta, and the other inter the other the other inverse images are all empty, so that's the empty set is open. Okay, so that's example one here. Example two. Um, <clears throat> let's say we have a single function. Um, ba, 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 ba. This is my f, and I have a topology tau on x. Then a set u inside y is open precisely when if f, it's a kiwi, uh, f inverse u. Uh, in final topology open in tau. So this is somehow dual to the case where I had a topology on x, I uh, want to put a topology on z, where z is the domain of a function to x, now it's the other way around. Um, and then f is continuous, um, and this is like the best best topology to put on y to make f continuous because I could do something like put the co-discrete topology on y um, so then the inverse images of the open sets are the empty set and all of x they're definitely open but this is sort of too silly right it's just take the lazy way out and it doesn't really see the topology on x at all so I can put I can throw in some more open sets more open sets and keep throwing them in until I can't throw in, throw in any more open sets on Y and still have F continuous. Because the more open sets there are in Y, the harder it is for F to be continuous because I have to check that their inverse images are all open inside X when I fix the topology on X. Okay. Um, I should say is a standard result. I mean, this is a, a very quick exercise. Composition of continuous functions are conti uh, is continuous. So given the definition that we had earlier, it's very, very quick. But it's always good to just double check that. Um, the identity function is continuous. And so I should say there is a category, bold face top with objects equals topological spaces. and um, morphisms so top from uh, x to y just the continuous functions so I won't be writing taus all the time into the future but 
this definition is sensitive to the choice of topology. Um, okay, so yeah. Um, I might sometimes write this as like C from X to Y if I'm sort of being very slack, but um, yes, um, any questions? We've got to roll out to the tutorial um, shortly. Um, anything else I should say? I want to say the gluing lemma at some point, but I'll do that at the start of the next lecture. Um, Pa, 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 pa. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Tess. Um, I'll record what I can, like just maybe the the wrap up. Yeah. So the product topology space kitter is an example of the initial topology, and if and so is the um, the subspace topology. Like I have a subset and I put a topology on it from the bigger set. That's also an example of the initial topology. So maybe uh, you could think, anyone who is super keen, make a note, think about how you would turn everything around um, from this example. Uh, where you had a, a family of Y's and a single X and topologies on all the Y's. Um, and how you'd define that in analogy with um, so you have to use a base in this case what you generate is a base um, a base on the domain of all the maps so it's not symmetric uh, completely anyway let's let's wrap up uh, we've got the the shoot on zoom can someone pop it in the the discord chat just go on um, uh, go on canvas grab the, the zoom link and I'll uh, see you there shortly <coughs> and otherwise I'll see you, uh, yeah, next lecture, Monday. <laughs>